something called the Home Guide. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that was uh, mostly people who had been in World War I, uh, which was my father and others. There they were after 1914. Here it was only uh, 10 or so years later, were engaged in a, a battle with Germany. But I bet if a bomb fell on that, that Anderson shelter, it wouldn't have... It would be curtains. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you were happy that the bomb fell on your street then. Yeah, 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 really, it's a, a trophy, really. How about the person whose house it fell on? Do you think they were happy? No, I, th I, th I think they were not happy. But, <laughs> but again, it was, uh, Gary, there was an amazing system of um, taking people to shelters mm -hmm. uh, where they were fed. And, um, and people got fed in ways that were much better than before the war. Mm -hmm. uh, fruit, fresh fruit, which was uh, scarce. You hardly ever saw it. But, but when you were bombed out, they'd give you all kinds of fruit. So it was, a, it was an unhappy time, which had a, a, a good outcome. So they would take care of you? Yeah. And then, uh, so the, uh, you remember many nights in the Anderson shelter? Many nights. Many, many, many nights. Like, uh, was it a situation where you would sleep in the Anderson shelter every night, or was it only when the bombs fell? Only, well, no, no. You had to get out. When the siren sounded, you waited till the... the you, the bombers had arrived. You could, you know, you could, you could hear them. You could hear the drone, mm -hmm. right? And then that was when we went into the shelter, mostly at the last moment, because mm -hmm. you didn't want there's no heat in the shelter, mm -hmm. so you had to have a lot of clothes on. And then, so you can imagine that if the, if the air raid was between 3 a.m. and and uh, 5 5 a.m., two hours down there in the cold, it was pretty pretty, pretty cool. chilly, yeah. yeah. And then we'd be bundled up, we'd bundled up and then we'd, we'd come out when the all clear sounded, the, the very loud, woo, woo. And uh, then when that siren sounded, it was great. We could come up, get some sleep, then I'd get my paper route again. Did that affect you, the sound of uh, the bombs falling? Like It was thrilling, really. So can you, you could sleep through that? No, I can, you can't sleep through a bombing raid. Right, so you, it would keep you awake. Yeah. And then... Um, the all clear was that what everyone was looking yeah. for? Yeah. Sometimes when that bomb came, when the bomb come, came, the once it came, the one time it came, on, and, and fell on our street, um, just about a hundred yards from our house, um, you could smell it. You can smell the cordite, the fumes mm -hmm. come over. Did you and your friends run down and see the big hole? Uh, not, not, not at the time, but when morning came, sure. Did you get a piece of that bomb? Uh, yeah, I collected bomb. And that was the biggest thing we collected and traded bomb parts, but nobody had it better than me with my paper route. I had my paper bag, and I put the, uh, the, the shrapnel, which had cooled by then, and the bomb fins, they were all had a different value. Bomb, bomb fins were the most precious. Then the bomb casing, and the, the shards of metal hmm. was the second thing. So you would come home with a paper bag fuller than when you left? Yeah. With all the papers? You yeah. You pretty strong. Yeah. Carrying all that stuff around. Well, well yeah. I, I probably get about two, or th two pounds anyway. Two pounds. Uh, I don't know what that is a metric today, but. Would you sell it for cash? Uh, you said you made a lot of money. I, on that. Uh, yeah, I, I'd sell it for cash, but uh, but generally you traded, so you, you know I get some something. Mm -hmm. So and bit by bit I got I got a camera, and that's what started me really, and and um, my first turn towards being a journalist. Now you've mentioned to me that you were living, uh, you lived through the bombings, and then you said your stories you would have been writing about were people's experiences in the bombings. Is that to you the heart of a good news story, is people? Yeah, I, without people you don't have a story. You can describe things all your life, but writing is not description. What is writing? Writing is, uh, is, is the story of people, and generally the people are going through hazard or they're going through great fortune. Writing is a, covers the, 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 the whole spread of humanity, what, what we do and how life is. Life, life is full of very great surprises, some pleasant, some decidedly not pleasant. Mm -hmm. So you, you, how long did you work for the Daily Mail as a reporter for? Probably a couple of years. And then what, what, was your, what happened after that? Why, you decided you were going to try something different? Um, you went to Cambridge at one point, didn't you? When did you go to school? Oh, yeah, yes. I went, and, uh, I, yes, I went to Cambridge. Uh, Where does that all fit in? Well, that, was, uh, well that, that would be when I was in my 20s. 
So you'd already written for the Daily Mail. Yeah. And now it was time to go to school. You just, was that yeah. where you did the physics course? Was it I went to school. Yeah, I went to school. I started physics. At Cambridge? Uh, at, at Manchester. At Manchester. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I, I decided physics was not my cup of tea. And I, I gradually, I, I, don't, I was always shooting Gary with my camera. Mm. And bit by bit, I began to sell those pictures mm. to the papers. And uh, I, th I thought it was a wonderful way to make a living. Hmm. Uh, it didn't call for a, a lot of brain power, it didn't call for skills. Yeah. And then, of course, ultimately, we would move to the world of television, which started in the 30s. Hmm. And very few people had television until the 40s came along, when people started to have them. And with the, as you know, the rabbit ears that uh, stuck up. <laughs> <laughs> What, what made a good picture for the newspaper? Like, what were the ones that they liked to buy? Uh, the, best, the best story they liked to buy is a murder. That would be, a murder would fall uh, uh, as a category number, triple A. You like that one. Yeah, that. they like that one. Uh, a second or equal to a murder is um, anything that was death-defying. Uh, a bridge collapsing, or uh, trains, two trains colliding. Was that a double A? Yeah, that would be a double A. Yeah. And then what would happen, uh, like, and you try to get pictures of those things. Yes, that's right. And how many pictures would you take of, say, a train wreck? As, well, uh, as, many as, as, as many as made made the story, not more, not less. So mm -hmm. uh, you, could, you could use in what was called a, the roll in those days. The roll was tw 24. Hmm. Shots, hmm. and um, so that would uh, that be you shoot as many as you needed. Would you would you look for gory pictures, bodies, stuff like that? Uh, no. Do you remember taking any of those pictures? Did they like? No, them? I never, I uh, never did. I never did. I, I suppose I no, I never, I never did. Just wasn't your thing. No. So then, um, in terms of writing. You're telling stories, but you're also telling stories with your pictures too. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So it's a different way of storytelling. Mm hmm So really, you're a storyteller. That's right. And then TV excited you because it was both writing and pictures together. Is that is that? That's correct. A good assumption. Yeah, that's right. So then, when did you leave? Okay. So did you go to Cambridge? Yes, and I, 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 first I went to Manchester, Manchester for University. For physics. For physics. Yeah. And then. Uh, then I decided I, I wanted to, I was dating then um, um, a young lady who was, uh, whose father was a doctor. So I went and I said, you know what, I'd like to switch to medicine. And uh, my counselor said, uh, Desmond, you know how long it takes to become a, a doctor? Five years of just studying and then three years of apprenticeship. He said, you know what, you'll be 30. 31 or so, do, do you really want to become a doctor that much? And I said, you know, I'm, I've had second thoughts at this very moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so you didn't. Are you glad you didn't become a doctor? Glad, very glad, yeah. So that was a good choice. Yeah. And so then, what did you take at Cambridge? What did I take? I, uh, Cambridge, no, Cambridge I took, I took um, physics. Uh, I think I took physics at Cambridge. And then I took... Um, How many uh, years did you go to Cambridge? Do you remember that? I, 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 um, I went... Um, I, one year, two years, six months? I went... Um, I know I didn't finish the course. It seems to me I, I went about a year and a half. And how about Manchester University? Manchester University, I, I, I got a degree. You did? What's your degree? Yeah, in? And uh, my degree was in... Um, uh, well, in a sense, it was photography, but it was photographic. Um, they, have a, they had a better, better term for it, uh, like a, an academic term. So you have a bachelor's degree? Yeah, a BA, yeah. In photography? Yeah. I never knew that. Well, in, in uh, you know, photographic... Um, arts or something? Arts, yeah, that's something right. Something like that? Yeah. And then in... Um, so you were in physics, didn't like it, switched to photographic that's arts? That's right. And then you went to Cambridge afterwards? Yeah. For like a graduate degree? Yeah, that's right. But I, I, I dropped out of that. That was a master's what, or something? That would have been a master's. But I was, I was, what, what had happened then, Gary, I was, I was selling so much stuff. Mm -hmm. I was actually making a living on my own. Yeah. And I was also trading. Uh, when I went, oh, well, that's the next step. 
uh, at 16 and a half, uh, the, the war had begun, and they accepted me. I was, I'd already been in the, um, uh, an IRF cadet. Right. And so uh, I got in at 16 and, 16 and three quarters. 17 was the age of admittance, but I got in. They needed me. And then I got, uh, I went to, um, I went to Aldershot, the great training base for the, um, for the Army. But uh, well, the, the Army trained there. There, were, there, were, there, were, there was probably about a thousand people training mm -hmm. at any one time. And we had our, our, um, our airfield, and, uh, and that's what we had. Uh, then I, wanted, I wrote, uh, you, you could apply to be a pilot navigator bomb aimer. The war was well underway at that time. Uh, they had plenty of pilots. And uh, so I became a, a, a candidate for a navigator. I just had the right skills for it. And uh, so I, I went, for that, I went to, um, uh, I was shipped overseas to, um, to RAF Wunstorf. Wunstorf's in the middle of uh, Germany. Germany was divided, as you know, in, into four quarters. There was a Russian sector, there was a British sector, there was the American sector, and there was uh, one other sector, French, the French sector. So I was in the British sector. And now, if I'd been making money before, now I was make, I'm making gold. Everything I, I did, I, I made money. I would uh, have my um, backpack, oh, uh, wow. my, uh, my, uh, my duffel bag, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'd fill that with coffee Cans of coffee in London, in, London, in, in Manchester, Alderstock. in Manchester, in yeah. Manchester, mm -hmm. when I, my my hometown. Right. And then I take that back. Uh, press press Ridge, Manchester is where I lived. So would you fly in a, a RAF plane? Yeah. Like a DC three or something? Yeah, that's right. And they so you'd have your duffel bag, but it wasn't full of clothing; it was full of coffee. Full of coffee. It must have smelled great. Well, it's in a can. Right. So you, there was no smell to it, but the, in Germany there was. The only thing they had was money. Hmm. They had nothing. There were houses were bombed. They were just as badly as ours were. Some places I went to, um, Hamburg, Hamburg was, which is the most, is a Hansa city with one of the, one of the great cities, the five great cities of Germany. Very picturesque, with a beautiful lake, hmm. and uh, and uh, that from that point on, we. Uh, I'll stop for a moment. Okay, so. Uh, why, why coffee? Why not groceries of some kind? Well, no reason. Do you reason. like coffee? Uh, yeah, that wouldn't be bad. just want to make sure we're still recording. Um, so the coffee, uh, what did you get for the coffee? Well, I got, what I got for the coffee was cameras. Uh, the like of, the, the, I, I, I collected two kinds of, of cameras to sell. One was the, uh, was the, um, the, um, Extractor or something? Well, they, uh, uh, this roller cord. Roller cord. Yeah. The roller cord was made not far from our airfield, and the other one was the exactor. The exactor. Right. For that, I had to go fly to Berlin, uh -huh. which was in the Americans. It was divided between the Russian, the British, the French, and the Americans. Right. Going to uh, Berlin was uh, was a total thrill, uh, it, because we'd been bombed so much. It was simply fantastic. I know these are horrible things to say now, but to see the ruin of a beautiful city mm. like, um, like, like Berlin. And I walked up the Unten den Linden, under the linden trees, it's called, it's their main, main street, and to, the, to the great monument, the, that, um, the, that, um, the great monument, the great arch, yeah. that, that, that uh, on the street that, was, that could take an army 12, 12 um, 26 soldiers wide, wow. huge, and we get, you went, we went up to the top of the tower of the of the of the monument through one of the one of the side side pieces. Walked up, of course, no elevators in those days. Something like 300 steps, and then you could step out uh, in a uh, like a passageway, and you could look down. It was incredible to see all of Berlin in front of you. In ruins. In ruins. But the arch wasn't hit. 
Pardon? The arch survived the bombing. Yeah, they, oh yes, it did. Yeah, it did. <clears throat> have you been to Berlin uh, since? Uh, yes, I, no, not, so, not in recent years, but... So have you been since it was reconstructed? Uh, no, I bet, no. So I, I when never you went back. in the 40s, you've not been back? No. So in your mind, it's still in ruins? Yeah, that's right. Okay. I was about my, yeah, that's right, exactly. Oh, that's just the images that you Yeah, have. yeah, that's right. So then you were in, like, I don't understand how you go, for, if you were based at the one base, how'd you get to Berlin? Oh, uh, just, uh, you'd get on a plane. You have a pass for a few days off, or would they stay? Yes, you get days off, so okay. I, I just go off and... Uh, and the RAF flew all the time to Berlin? Yeah, the all, the, all the time. It was great. Free that's tickets, a, no problem? There were no tickets, really. You just got on the plane. Oh, okay. No tickets. I mean, it's not a commercial airline. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had, did you have to be in uniform? Those were the, 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 those 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 planes. They'd have the uh, they'd have the doors open, the side doors, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd be in, you, you could sit on the very edge, just as it was in, later on in Vietnam. You could sit on your. You could even put your feet out if you were daring. That, that was a bit stupid, but you were right on the edge. You could look out. So they would fly with the doors open. The side doors, yeah, yeah. Why? Behind the behind the props. So we, well, so you could take photographs. So you could.